Now that we have a strong sense as to what we're going to expect during translation based off of our first translation introductory flowchart, we can begin the actual process in this next flowchart entitling it Translation 2. So let's entitle it Translation Roman numeral 2. Let me just fix that to Translation 2. So what are we going to talk about here? Well, first, I want you to, to make sure that you understand what the ribosome really is in terms of its structure. So it's very important to understand the ribosome because this is the major, major, major player of translation and thus of overall protein synthesis. Because remember, once again, the central dogma is DNA will be turning into RNA, and that RNA will be turning into hopefully protein. We have covered about half the story so far in the transcription side. Now we're doing the TSN translation side. Let's dissect this story even further by looking at where it's occurring. This translation mainly occurs at the ribosomal level. So the ribosome itself has a very important structure that helps aid in its function, much like all of biology. The ribosome structure, its components consist of proteins. It has many proteins within it, and it also has a component known as rRNA. We talked about this when we mentioned the types of RNA, but now I just want to make sure you understand that this rRNA originally is, of course, transcribed from where do you think? Of course, the blueprint, it's transcribed from DNA. But does it serve that same messenger purpose as mRNA? Does it serve that same transfer purpose as tRNA? No, of course not. This RNA molecule, this ribosomal structural component, is there because it actually serves many catalytic functions. Okay, it has catalytic functions in the sense that these functions are necessary for um, the start of translation. RNA molecules are very good at starting things, specifically translation. They catalyze translation. They are actually not involved, okay, it's a nuance here, not involved in any of the transfer of information, okay? Meaning that they're not involved in the mRNA process or the tRNA process of bringing in amino acids or reading codons. They're just structural components that catalyze reactions that are going to be seen in the translation overall process. In addition, ribosomes have this very unique structure that most people don't realize. They're actually originally, before translation happens, because we often see them in a cell as one little circle, there are actually two distinct parts, okay? There are actually two parts to the ribosome um, that fit together. Two parts of ribo, um, meaning the ribosome, fit together during translation. Okay, it is only during translation do we get this nice sort of circular looking structure. Two parts of ribosome fit together during TSN, translation. So we'll do TSN right here. So what do I mean by this? Well, there's a small subunit for the ribosome that's small, and there's also, you guessed it, a large subunit that's relatively large, larger than, of course, its smaller counterpart. So what do these two things do? Well, more specifically, when they combine, which we'll see in our initiation, when we do the initiation part in the next part of the flowchart, these two things will combine to create some sites of translation, some points at which uh, you need to understand important reactions are going to be happening. Those sites are labeled the A site, the P site, and the E site okay, of the ribosome. It's very important to get a visual understanding of this. I highly suggest looking at your textbook image of these sites or looking at a Google image of the ribosomal translational sites. The A site is going to be referred to as the place in which the amino acyl tRNA, what does that mean? That means the charged tRNA, right? the amino for A, amino acyl tRNA, um, with the next amino acid, because there's going to be a sequence, with the next amino acid binds here. So when we have an amino acid that's next in line, it's going to bind at the A site, because we're going to do a sequence of amino acid 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way up to however many amino acids are necessary for this polypeptide chain to happen. So the next one in line binds at the A site, okay? The P site is a little bit different in the sense that this is going to be the place in which the tRNA holding the growing polypeptide chain binds, okay? 
What do I mean by this? The growing PPC binds, okay, the P site. So it's called the P site because this is where we have the peptide bonds forming. The P site, I think, is like the central component of a ribosome because this is where you're going to literally have a peptide bond form between the new amino acid that just shifts into the P site from the A site and then binds via a peptide bond, P site, peptide bond as part of the growing polypeptide chain. A lot of binding, a lot of uh, um, covalently bonding things together to create a polypeptide chain. Well, then what happens once we've binded? You have to exit. And of course, the tRNA, that's done. It's brought its amino acid in through the A site. It's done a peptide bond. And now it's time for it to exit. tRNA exits the ribosome at the E site. So E for exit, exits the ribosome. So that's our basic components. Uh, a, P, and E sites as a part of the large and small subunit combining together via this rRNA protein-like structure in order to give us a ribosome. So you've probably never seen a ribosome as complex as these following statements occur. Uh, but it's important to recognize that it's not just a little circle on you know, a big cell chart. It is much more complex than that. It has these following components that add to its complexity and aid in its translative properties. So let's actually get started on translation now. Um, we're almost done with our gene expression, so let's begin the final part of gene expression, which is right here, translation. We're going to take an RNA molecule and turn it into a protein, a polypeptide chain specifically. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is initiation, much like our transcription flowchart had as well. In this initiation process, the overarching theme is the following. The initiation is necessary because it brings together these two parts, of course. It brings together um, the mRNA, okay, that's another component. It also brings together the tRNA with first amino acid, which we can just call, let's say, amino acid 1, okay, AA1 or first amino acid, whatever you want to call it, tRNA with first amino acid and also, so and with a plus sign, two subunits of ribosome, two, let's say, ribosomal subunits. So we have combined many things here. We have combined our mRNA, that was the result of transcription. We are combining our tRNA, that's charged and ready with our first amino acid, and we are combining the two ribosomal subunits on together, top of each other. Small and small, small and large subunits are going to combine through initiation. So that's a good summative statement of what happens in initiation. I think a better way to even further understand this is to look at three key steps of initiation, which we'll go through right now. So the first key step of initiation, the literal first step of the first step of translation, would be to have the small subunit, okay, this is the first component of our uh, translation story, the small subunit will, go, will bind with an mRNA molecule, okay, that was a result of transcription, it will also bind with the initiator tRNA molecule, so that first tRNA that has the initiation amino acid. Um, that's usually going to be um, with methionine, so W slash with MET for methionine. That's usually the case, so the initi initi initiator tRNA is usually charged with methionine. All of these things bind together. That's our first sub-step of initiation. Next, so when does a large subunit come in? Well, what's going to actually first happen before the large subunit comes in is that the small subunit will be doing some reading. Okay, it's going to be doing some light reading in the sense that the small subunit goes down the mRNA. And I find this fascinating that this structure, without a brain, without anything, is going to literally go down, goes down the mRNA molecule that was made out of transcription and literally read it goes down this mRNA until it reads that famous AUG start codon. The AUG start codon. So the whole point of the AUG start codon nonsense that we talked about when we were talking about codons and sequences is because AUG says, you know what, this means that we have to start building a polypeptide chain by utilizing this AUG start codon and bringing in methionine into our um, P site, okay? And that's what's going to be happening. We're going to see that later on in elongation.
So this is our first, second idea. Small subunit goes down mRNA until it reads AUG star codon. So once you've combined everything, you're going to read through the mRNA, you're going to find AUG, and then finally, in step three of initiation, the things called initiation factors, initiation factors, which are simply just proteins, small proteins. These initiation factors are actually going to bring in that large subunit, so there's that large subunit, it wasn't just sitting there, it's actually going to come in, that large subunit, to complete what is known as the translation to complete TSN initiation complex. And that initiation complex will then go into elongation and then finally termination later on. So the basic idea is this. We have an mRNA molecule like this, and it's going to find a small subunit of the ribosome like this. In step one, they will combine together along with a tRNA molecule that has the charged up methionine. So we're going to have um, this combination happen. This combination will result in this small subunit going down this mRNA and finding an AUG. Once it's found that AUG, we have a large subunit right on top that's ready to come down on top of this structure. Once we have this come down on top of the structure, we finally have our step three, which is the final completion of a very rudimentary, poorly drawn, but I hopefully you understand, AUG will be right over there. This is our translation initiation complex, TSN, I and I, I'll just write I and I complex right then and there. Please look at your textbook to get a much better uh, drawing of this. Hopefully now we've got a good understanding of the ribosome and its importance, the idea that it's a small and large subunit with these A, P, and E sites, which we're about to talk about in elongation, and we understand the sub sub, let's say, steps of initiation altogether. So now we've really, really gotten this process going. Let's continue it in the next video.